In this presentation, I'm going to look at the difference between a bond purchased at a discount versus a bond purchased at a premium. Now, when we're looking at bonds, there's two components to a bond that we have to be concerned with. First is its principal amount here. That's its face value, and that's what's paid to the bondholder uh, when that bond matures. And then the second component here is those semi, or usually they're semi-annual interest payments that are based on uh, the percentage of uh, the stated rate of interest on the bond. In, and then we have to discount those, uh, that principal amount back and those payment amounts back to determine its present value. And we do that using the market rate of interest, whatever that market rate is paying for that bond. In the case of a discount here, we'll see that its present value is less than its principal amount. And that difference is the interest that has to be amortized on that bond. In in this case, you will see here, or in all cases here, when you have a discount, the market rate of interest is greater than the stated rate of interest. Here, the market rate was 10%, the stated rate was 9%. And you can see that here because you need a greater rate of interest to, when it amortize this bond up to its principal amount here, you, you need a greater rate of interest because it's, it's less than the principal amount. And I did that, uh, determine that present value here just using an Excel function here. Now if we look at a premium, a bond purchased at a premium, well, we do the same thing. We discount that uh, principal amount back as well as those, sem in this case, semi-annual payments back. And there we're using again the market rate of interest. Now, if we look here, we'll see that its present value after discounting those uh, face value and those payments back, that present value is greater than the principal amount here. In, in the case of uh, premium, and that, that, that's called a premium here, and that has to, that rate here, that interest here has to be amortized over the life of that bond. Now, if we look here, the market rate of interest is less than the stated rate of interest. Here I used 8% um, versus, uh, on the market rate and 9% on the uh, stated rate of interest on the bond. And that's the case here. That's the general case here, where if you look at the discount, the market rate of interest is greater than the stated rate of interest, and you're paying less here for the bond than its face value. And then with the premium amount, you're paying more uh, for its paying more for the bond than its principal amount here. And the the difference here would in this case uh, the premium that interest it has to be allocated over the life of the bond. And if we look up here at the discount uh, we'll see there's also that interest component and that has to be amortized over the life of the bond. All right, let's look at how we amortize the discount or the premium on a bond. Let's look at the first case here where we purchase a bond for $96,150 and its face value is $100,000. So we use a bond discount account or it's a contra account where we subtract in this case $3,851 from the $100,000 and it as shows the balance here or the book value of $96,150. So each period we reduce this discount amount and thus uh, the difference here between the discount amount and the face value is reduced thus the carrying value of this or the book value of this bond increases and we want to do that until uh, the last period where this book value um, should be a hundred thousand dollars and then the bond uh, which should balance with the hundred thousand dollar face value of the bond here so how do we uh, account for or how do we reduce this discount each period? Well, we do it through uh, the difference here between the uh, market rate of interest that we charge to the income statement and then this interest payment which is based on the uh, uh, stated rate of interest on the loan. So let's look here uh, for this first period here. So we have a stated rate of interest and it would be $4,500. Then we use this market rate of interest here or we determine that by taking the market rate of interest times the uh, book value for that period and then we come up with this interest expense which we charge to our income statement. Now taking the difference here between the market rate of interest that we're charging to the income statement and this interest payment we get uh, amortization of the bond here that difference here and $4,807 
from the $4,500 gives us an amortization amount here of $307. So this amount we use and we subtract that from uh, this bond discount here. And we do that each period. We uh, determine our interest expense here based on the uh, carrying value of the bond. And then we subtract this interest expense from the interest payment and we get this amortization amount. And then we take that amortization amount and subtract that from the balance in that uh, bond discount here. Thus reducing that through this am amortizing the bond through this difference here in interest expense and thus this bond, am bond discount reduces increasing the book value of the bond. So that's basically how it works. All right, let's look at how we'd amortize a bond purchased at a premium. So, if, for example, here we purchased a bond for $104,100, face value of $100,000. So we use a bond premium account here. In this case, it would be the difference here, $4,100. $4, you add the $4,100 to the face amount here of $100,000, and then you get this book value. Now, we have to decrease this book value from $104,000 down to $100,000. So at maturity, the uh, book value equals the uh, face amount of the bond or the, this face value here. So how do we do that? We, we have to decrease this bond premium account each period because when you add the bond premium to the bonds payable, then you get the book value here. So in order to decrease this book value, you have to decrease this bond premium account. So how we do that is through an amortization here of the premium. And that is based on the difference here between the interest uh, payment at the stated rate and then this interest expense that we recognize on the income statement. Now this interest expense is based on the market rate of interest. And then we take, uh, to determine this value here, we take the market rate of interest times whatever the current balance is here in this, uh, the book value of the bond times that market rate and we get this interest expense. So we subtract again the interest expense from the interest payment here and then the different go, difference goes into this amortization account. So here the amortization of the bond premium is still a plus amount but we still have to subtract it here from the bond premium account. So each period we subtract this amortization of, of the bond premium based on this interest expense versus the interest payment. And then you can see here, uh, we reduce that balance in the bond premium account. So at the end of the period, uh, this uh, balance here in bond premium should be zero. And that would leave our book value of the bond at, it would balance with the uh, face value of the bond.